One of the great joys of being convention president this year has been the opportunity to work alongside of our, I guess he will still call him new, our executive director treasurer, Dr. Paul Chitwood. I've uh, joked that I've probably spent more time with Dr. Chitwood than anyone outside of his family over the last uh, year in uh, meeting together and eating those box lunches and traveling different places and just spending wonderful time uh, together. I am so encouraged by the work that God has done in Kentucky Baptist life over this last year and so much of the credit, humanly speaking, goes to our leader, our executive director treasurer, Dr. Paul Chitwood. Chair is privileged to recognize him to come and bring the report from our mission board. And at this time, I also pass the gavel to T.J. Francis to preside during this time. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate uh, your gracious introduction. I appreciate so much uh, your service. It was grateful to be your pastor at First Baptist Mount Washington. Uh, uh, privilege that I've handed off to Dr. Billy Compton and grateful certainly for your friendship uh, not only to me but to Kentucky Baptist. Grateful uh, to Ron Edmondson and uh, the gracious hosting of Emmanuel Baptist Church uh, for this meeting today. also want to express uh, my deep gratitude uh, to Kentucky Baptist uh, for their prayers uh, for my wife Michelle even as you have uh, carried your own burdens and the burdens of your Fellow church members and families, uh, we have certainly felt you carrying air burden as she has uh, undertaken uh, this battle with breast cancer. This is her off week for chemo, and so she was actually feeling well enough to accompany me today, and uh, very grateful for that. I told her after coming home from yet another association meeting uh, just recently where uh, yet another group of believers had gathered around me to pray specifically for her. I said, you're bound to be the most prayed for lady in the state of Kentucky right now. And that's just the way I'd want it. And we're seeing God answer those prayers and uh, just praise him for his goodness in the midst of uh, these days. We felt the Lord's presence guiding us, and directing us, uh, not only in this journey with our family, uh, but uh, in this journey with the Kentucky Baptist Convention family over the course of uh, this past year. It's been a historic year of transition, a very active year. Uh, the involvement of our committee members, chairpersons, uh, others who have been enlisted to assist us uh, with the transition that's undertaken. Uh, the dedication of our staff members has been uh, unprecedented, uh, working many long hours uh, to uh, stay up with uh, the changes and making sure that we were taking care of business uh, has been encouraging to me, humbling to me. I'm deeply uh, grateful uh, for their partnership and that work. In the midst of uh, what really has been a time of uh, economic strain, not only for our country, but for our churches and for the work of uh, the denomination, uh, I have seen that these days have brought tremendous clarity to our work, and I'm grateful for that. Our new mission statement is more new, uh, more old rather than new, uh, because it takes us back to the cause of our founding 175 years ago, back when churches and associations of Kentucky Baptist Convention churches came together in 1837, rightly believing that they together could do more to advance the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in Kentucky and to the ends of the earth than they could do so working alone. And so that new mission statement is the Kentucky Baptist Convention created by churches, for churches, to help churches reach Kentucky and the world for Christ. That statement guides the work of your Kentucky Baptist Convention mission board staff day by day. You'll note there is no sense of entitlement in that statement for your staff. To the contrary, that statement reminds us as your mission board staff that we are only here because you've put us here. And we're only here to help serve you, our churches. Let me tell you about one of those churches that we're privileged to serve. And all that church has accomplished over the course of this past year. I've been talking about this church everywhere I go in Kentucky. Why is that? Well, consider this. It's a church that believes in church planting. And in fact, this church planted 18 new churches in Kentucky this past year. Ten of them ethnic churches targeting the Pantata ethne that God has brought to the commonwealth. 
This church is very engaged in youth ministry. In fact, witnessed over 700 teens come to faith this past summer alone. This church is very committed to taking the gospel to what I have termed the epicenters of lostness in our state. And that is the college and university campuses where 95% of the young men and women who attend classes on our college and university campuses in the state of Kentucky do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to find lostness, it's not far away. Just make your way onto those campuses. And yet this is a church that is being very intentional about their evangelism efforts on those campuses and have witnessed over 300 professions of faith just this past year. This church is committed to the great commandment ministries that our Lord has charged us with. In fact, this church today has multiple teams serving in New York in the wake of the devastation left behind by Hurricane Sandy. There, helping people put their lives back together and sharing with them the life-giving message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm encouraged to talk about this church. While I don't have time to tell you everything this church is doing, let me just highlight one more thing. This church has a heart for the nations. A heart so big that they have sent out 4,886 missionaries to 180 countries of the world. Now as you hear me describe this church, surely you're thinking this must be a big church. But I'm not talking about Hillview or Highview or even Emmanuel Baptist or Severns Valley or Living Hope. Which church in the Kentucky Baptist Convention am I talking about? I'm talking about every church in the Kentucky Baptist Convention that gives through the cooperative program. That includes, of course, Hillview and Highview and Emmanuel and Severns Valley and Living Hope, but it also includes Pleasant Ridge in Owen County, Slate Branch in Pulaski County, Buck Creek in Calhoun and Trammell Fork in Scottsville. Every church that gives through the cooperative program can, to the glory of God, enjoy being a part of all that God is doing through the work of the Kentucky Baptist Convention and the Southern Baptist Convention, and that's the wonderful thing about being a part of our convention. That's the wonderful thing about that wonderful program Tom Melville spoke of, the cooperative program. Another wonderful thing is the way your churches are giving through the cooperative program. As Dr. Greenway mentioned a few moments ago, for the first time in four years, uh, we are not looking at a decline year to year, but we are actually celebrating as we close the books on this most recent fiscal year an uptick in cooperative program giving of nearly 1%. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your sacrifice in the midst of what I know for many of us are challenging days. Your mission board staff commit to serving well the 2,400 churches of Kentucky Baptist Convention with the resources of those churches that those churches have so generously given through the cooperative program. And to that end, we do have a new structure. As always, the executive office team at the KBC and the business team serve primarily in support roles, but also assist churches in many direct ways through communications, through processing those cooperative program gifts and other missions offerings, as well as in many other ways. My thanks go uh, to both of those teams for their good support of the mission board staff, their good support of our churches, and especially for their long hours organizing, planning, and pulling off today's meeting. When it comes to strengthening the day-to-day -day ministries of the local church, however, there are three teams that are our frontline soldiers who are out with you on the front lines. And I want to introduce those teams uh, to you today. The teams that are in place, created by churches, for churches, to help churches reach Kentucky and the world for Christ. Let me call the staff members who are here, who serve on those teams, uh, to join me here on the stage. First, our church consulting and revitalization team. If you're a part of that team, KBC staffers, come stand with me here. That team consists of 13 consultants who serve in field-oriented capacities. That is to say, their days are not spent in an office at the Kentucky Baptist Building. Their days are spent interacting with pastors and staff members and lay leaders in the local church, seeking to find ways to help your churches become even more effective at reaching Kentucky and the world for Christ. Steve Rice has recently joined us as uh, the new team leader 
of our church consulting and revitalization team, Steve, uh, as a longtime pastor in Kentucky uh, that uh, saw the Lord work through him to revitalize churches, is well qualified for this job. I'm very grateful that he is here. Alan Witham, Todd Gray, Jeff Crabtree, and Ronnie Rains, and Alan Dodson are also serving alongside of Steve as our regional pastoral ministry consultants. We divided the, team, the state up into five regions. Each one of these men has about 400 regions and a number of associations assigned to him uh, where they are living in their region. Their job is to get up every day to make connections with their directors of missions, to find out how they can resource them, to make connections with the local church pastors, to find out how they can encourage and resource them. These are men uh, who have served well uh, in the local church setting and now are serving well the local churches across the state. Our team, the church consulting and revitalization team, has two divisions. Not only do we have these regional pastoral ministry consultants, but we also have a division that uh, we refer to as our church ministry consultants. Uh, sort of from the cradle to the grave, the traditional ministries of a Baptist church, we have a consultant who can come alongside of you in those ministries and uh, help encourage you and resource you to make them even more effective than they already are. Carl Babb serves on this team in transition and conflict management, and specialist Peggy Berry serves alongside of him, helping our churches manage conflict, manage transitions, also helping ministers uh, who are looking for opportunities to serve in new staff roles or churches who are trying to fill uh, staff vacancies. John Bennett serves on this team. He is our children's ministry consultant. Shelly Johns is our senior adult and woman's ministry consultant. Don Spencer is our church financial benefits uh, consultant. And all of these uh, team members, again, they're here uh, to help you. Darrell Wilson, unable to be with us, I think, because, oh no, Darrell has made it. We had, had a family funeral this week. I didn't know if he would be able to join us on the stage, but uh, grateful that Darrell is here today. He's working with Sunday School and Discipleship and serves as a consultant to your churches. Uh, we are currently undertaking a search for a worship and music ministry consultant, and Steve Rice is uh, leading us in that search as our team leader, and we look forward soon to being able to introduce to you our ministers of music and our churches uh, uh, who are led either by uh, staff members or volunteer leaders in their worship and music ministry. We look forward to introducing to you soon a consultant uh, who will be available to help serve alongside of them in a full-time capacity. Currently, uh, we still have our part-time consultants, uh, five of them on contract with the Kentucky Baptist Convention who have been serving well over the last few years and who are still available uh, to serve with you. Uh, David Melber talked about uh, the new partnership between the KBC and and Crossings Ministries, of course, uh, that's an old partnership, as he referenced, but it's taken a new uh, identity, and we've taken it to a new level. They are in the process of, of moving into the Kentucky Baptist Convention building, where they'll house their staff alongside of our staff, and uh, they have accepted the responsibility of providing not a consultant, but a group of consultants uh, who can come alongside and help train and equip uh, youth uh, ministry pastors and lay leaders in the local church. Roger Palmer is heading up that ministry. I don't think Roger's able to be with us today, but Joe Ball and Patrick Greer are able to be with us today. Roger, did you make it? Yeah. Hey, thanks for being here, Roger. And uh, Joe Ball standing just to his side there, and uh, Patrick Greer as well. Uh, these three men are uh, have tremendous experience and background in uh, serving our churches and serving uh, in youth ministry uh, roles themselves. And they will do a great job, I am certain, at serving uh, the youth pastors and youth ministry uh, efforts of Kentucky Baptist Convention churches. I'm going to ask our evangelism and church planting team as well to, uh, to join us here at the stage. Uh, thrilled to be able to introduce to you. Yeah, we'll be able to fit them all up here. This, uh, by the way, let me point out, this is our largest team. As you look across uh, the team structure of your mission board staff, we have devoted the majority of our resources and personnel to church consulting and revitalization ministry because I am deeply convicted and convinced that when we look at uh, the most recent statistics that show us that 72% of our churches in the Southern Baptist Convention are plateaued or in decline, uh, 
we know that many of those churches want to be helped. And we want to be able to help them. And so we've devoted the majority of our resources uh, to having qualified, capable servants uh, who aren't necessarily planning events, but uh, who are out day to day in the field, walking alongside of the leaders of those churches, seeking to encourage them and strengthen them in their work. Uh, Chuck McAllister has joined us recently as the Evangelism and Church Planting Team Leader. Uh, Chuck uh, is an evangelist. Uh, he led a great church to do uh, remarkable things in reaching the lost and the unchurched. Over the course of the last two or three years, he has been in full-time evangelism ministry and uh, could share with us stories about the thousands who have come to Christ uh, under his ministry. Uh, he brings uh, a unique passion uh, and a skill set uh, to our mission board staff, and he is already planning uh, uh, regional strategies uh, for your churches in the region of our state, working alongside those regional pastoral uh, ministry consultants uh, where a strategy will be developed with the pastors and the directors of missions to help reach that particular part of the state. I'm grateful for Chuck's leadership and certainly thankful to have him on board. Serving alongside of him, Aaron Harvey is our North American Mission Board appointed church planting strategist. Uh, grateful that the Lord uh, had Aaron here serving as a church plant, as, as a pastor in Kentucky during his seminary days. Uh, then took him as a church planter in Philadelphia with North American Mission Board where he served as a planting pastor and served a church plant that planted churches. And so he is all about church planting. He comes to help us in partnership with the North American Mission Board and utilizing the resources of church planters being raised up at Southern Seminary to get those church planters plugged into church planting opportunities in Kentucky and beyond. We're thankful to have Aaron with us. Uh, Carlos Delabar is also uh, serving on this team. One of the little known facts about church planting in Kentucky is that ethnic church starts have outnumbered Anglo church starts in Kentucky significantly over the last few years. Uh, that's a testimony to Carlos and his team and the leadership that they are giving. Ten new churches were started this past year under his leadership, uh, under the leadership of Larry Baker and now Chuck McAllister and Aaron Harvey, Eight new Anglo churches were started this past year. Collegiate ministry is also a part of our evangelism and church planting team, and some of our campus ministers are able to join us as well on the stage. Keith Inman, who has served Kentucky Baptist for 25 years uh, in collegiate ministry, is retiring and transitioning into the pastorate. We're so grateful for his faithful ministry for a quarter of a century. We're beginning the process of evaluating our collegiate evangelism strategy, and we'll keep you updated as we move along. Our missions mobilization team uh, also has some of its members uh, here, and I'll invite them to join us on the stage here if they've not made their way up yet. They coordinate projects from across the state uh, involving thousands of volunteers and disaster relief ministry uh, workers wherever it's needed, from Kentucky uh, to Japan. Eric Allen is the new team leader of the missions mobilization team. Uh, grateful to have him serving in that capacity. And our partnerships with directors of missions in the state as well as state missionaries and North American Mission Board missionaries and many others, we saw over 30,000 volunteers on the ground serving in mission outreach efforts in Kentucky just this past year. Teresa Parrott, that's a lot of people to coordinate, but I know you have a lot of good partners across this state, and we're thankful for Teresa and the good leadership that she gives. Scott Pittman is our point man for the St. Louis Partnership. You saw a video about it earlier as well as other missions partnerships that we have, particularly overseas opportunities. Uh, Scott serves a consulting role for churches needing assistance, getting involved with mission volunteer service overseas. Coy Webb uh, directs our disaster relief ministry. Uh, Kentucky Disaster Relief is entering into a pilot project uh, with Baptist Global Response that we're very excited about. Here's what that's gonna look like. Our disaster relief volunteers will be responding uh, to natural disasters and humanitarian uh, crises that take place in sub-Saharan Africa. The needs there, if you've been on the ground, oh my, the, the, the needs are unspeakable. We want to do what we can in working with Baptist Global Response to help meet those needs. And 
Coy's giving visionary leadership to that, even as it's being birthed right now. Coy's not with us today because he's currently giving leadership to our Hurricane Sandy relief efforts across uh, the North American Mission Board DR with our partners. And, and we wanted to give you a quick update on what that looks like. So you turn your attention to the screen. Hey, my name is Brenda Smith, and I'm here talking with Coy Webb, the Disaster Relief Director for the Kentucky Baptist Convention. How are you, Coy? Doing great today. It's a beautiful day here in New York, and we're getting lots of meals out. Can you tell me more about how you're seeing God work spiritually in this situation, and what kind of spiritual response you're seeing from the folks that you're serving? You know, we're, we're, of course, uh, you know, our, our kitchen, sometimes sometimes the uh, Red Cross people are actually delivering food, but we're still having a lot of contact with local people. And it's kind of been interesting. Uh, uh, we're in an area where there just aren't a lot of believers, and a lot of people are somewhat, uh, they, they just tell you that uh, we're not spiritual or, or, or you know, I, I just don't believe like you do. But it's kind of been interesting uh, in talking to our volunteers as the responses continued. Some of those same people have moved from, you know, I'm just not interested in spiritual things, to now allowing us to pray with them even asking for prayer, you know, engaging uh, in spiritual conversations that, you know, three or four days ago they weren't even interested in the beginning. I heard an amazing story that I'd like you to share about how uh, folks in the community came through with propane so that you all could cook meals. That, you know, it, it's been amazing the response of local people in the area, how much they appreciate what we're doing, how many of them have just uh, tried to help in any way they could. and. One of the amazing things is uh, one of our kitchens was completely out of propane and we need to get two meals out. When that word got out to the community, people began just dropping off uh, uh, their grilled propane tanks uh, uh, one or two at a time. And uh, uh, it, we didn't have a lot of extra, but they managed to get uh, two meals out that day with that. And it was just amazing. And then, uh, and then even yesterday, we had a gentleman from Albany that just drove down with a uh, trailer load of gas and was just kind of trying to figure out where he could go and heard about us. And, gas yesterday and it was gas we were out of gas for, uh, for the forklifts and so uh, by him showing up just the right time it enabled those forklifts to keep working for us to continue to get uh, trucks unloaded yesterday how can Kentucky Baptist be a resource to you during this time I, you know I think Brenda there's several ways one is I think prayer uh, please pray for our volunteers it's been a tough and challenging response logistically but also the weather uh, you know we're it's, it's late fall, early winter in New York City, and so the temperatures uh, escalating back and forth always make it more challenging uh, for our responses as our kitchens. Most of them are set up for hurricane response along the Gulf Coast in warm weather, so this is much more challenging. So please pray for our volunteers. Pray for the seeds that are being planted. Uh, pray that, uh, that people will be open uh, to, to our witness and our ministry and the gospel. And then I think one way that's always a great way, and giving is important, Responses like this are very costly, and uh, you know, it, it, you know, by our church's giving, it enables us to be here. It enables us to have the resources we need to minister, and it also enables us to use resources to actually give to, to those who've been victimized by the disaster. So, uh, you know, churches giving is, is so critical for our work, and uh, quite the program is certainly the foundation of everything we do. But in their special gifts enable us to go beyond uh, even our normal uh, response to be able to help folks in a deeper way in these kind of in, in these kind of situations and needs. Excellent. And if folks want to give, they can go to www.kybaptist.org/dr, and there's a link right there at the top of the page that'll allow them to give online, and they can also see regular updates of what's going on in disaster relief work. Um, what about volunteers? Are you looking for more volunteers, more trained volunteers to respond? We, we could use more trained volunteers. Um, we're, we're thinking the response is going to go at least a couple more weeks, possibly even go into months. Uh, they're saying two months. You know, it's still kind of day by day. Uh, so we can use more trained volunteers and, uh, and, and even some untrained ones. Uh, in, in the last situations, it's just difficult for us to use large numbers of untrained volunteers. But we certainly do want uh, folks to be trained and equipped to respond. And we've got a bunch of trainings coming up here in a few months uh, all across the state. And if folks are interested in becoming trained disaster relief volunteers, they can go to www.kybaptist.org slash drtraining and get all the dates and all the locations for that, right? Right. We'd love to get folks connected. And 
And again, it's always the best way to be prepared to be able to respond uh, effectively and that we can use you um, uh, by getting you, uh, getting you the right credentials so that you can get into disaster sites to be able to answer in, in the right way so that you're part of the help and solution and not to become part of a problem. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your wonderful leadership, Coy, and extend our thanks and our gratitude to the other folks that are leading there. I saw Karen and Harold Smith in the background saying hello. So uh, tell everybody we love them and we appreciate them and we're praying for them. We appreciate that, Brenda. And please pass on to our churches that we can't do this without the program and the lives of us offering for state missions. That's the foundation that enables us to be able to respond when we're called upon. Right. Thank you so much, Coy. Thanks, Brenda. You all have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. One other staff member I want to introduce you to, Curtis Woods, if you don't mind, join me here on the stage. Curtis Woods is uh, serving as uh, my associate executive director, serving our churches. He's particularly uh, involved in convention relations uh, and uh, heading up our communications efforts. Uh, Curtis is also helping us make uh, much-needed connections with our African-American congregations and multi-ethnic congregations. I'm very, very grateful to Lord has brought him uh, to serve alongside of Kentucky Baptist during these days. These aren't all of our staff members. As I mentioned, there's a couple of other teams that are in support roles. Uh, but these are the frontline folks who are out in the field day to day that I wanted to be sure uh, you, you got to know today. Uh, as I uh, take a look at, at the folks who are standing here with me and, and uh, think in my mind about the other members of our team, uh, I'm just so grateful, so grateful for those the Lord has brought alongside of me. Those who God is using, I'm going to continue to use to bless the churches of the Kentucky Baptist Convention. Uh, do remember to pray for these staff members as they pray for and serve alongside of you. Thank you, man. Thank you, ladies. What lies ahead for the Kentucky Baptist Convention? Let me share with you uh, uh, quickly how we are approaching the Great Commission Task Force recommendation adopted by our convention two years ago. We want to do everything we can to prioritize getting the gospel where it isn't. And to that end, uh, we, uh, along with our uh, business and finance team uh, and uh, our uh, uh, business and finance committee of the mission board, uh, have uh, devised a plan to accelerate our transition to a 50-50 split uh, with Southern Baptist Convention causes in a two-step process. The budget we're proposing for 2013-2014 fiscal year is step number one. In that budget proposal, the Kentucky Baptist Convention and Southern Baptist Convention will each receive 45% of cooperative program funds that come from Kentucky Baptist Convention churches. The other 10% will be designated for cooperative program resourcing for both the Kentucky Baptist Convention and the Southern Baptist Convention. Let me tell you what this already looks like in Kentucky. I received a breakdown from uh, one of our uh, agency heads in the Southern Baptist Convention uh, showing all of the state conventions across the SBC. And when it comes to what we call the, the old mainline state conventions, like Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida. Those, there's, a, there's a group of them that we sort of group together as the original state conventions, the old mainline state conventions. Uh, and looking at what Kentucky is doing compared to all of the other old line state conventions in terms of getting more resources, particularly to the IMB, getting more resources to the places in the world where the gospel isn't. Kentucky stands alone. The other old line state conventions are either plateaued or declining in the receipts that they're sending on, quarter program receipts that they're sending on to the SBC and ultimately to the IMB. And I thank the Lord many of them are making plans currently and maybe even adopting today at their state convention meetings uh, Great Commission plans uh, like our task force recommended to us a couple of years ago. But right now, Kentucky is out in front and leading the way as well, we expect, right? As we move forward into this 2013-14 fiscal year, we'll take 
another step at getting to that 50-50 split and continue to see more resources go uh, to the ends of the earth. Now, step number two comes with the 2014-15 budget. And that budget will be voted on next year at our annual meeting. That budget will reduce the cooperative program resourcing line item from 10% down to 7%, thus allowing additional funds to flow onto the SBC and ultimately to the IMB. For the foreseeable future beyond that 14-15 budget uh, that we'll propose next year, we would see those percentages remaining the same, a 50-50 split where 7% is used for cooperative program resourcing on behalf of the Southern Baptist Convention and the Kentucky Baptist Convention. Now you may recall that the Great Commission Task Force recommendations called for 10 years to accomplish the shifting of funds. And it also included not a 10% or a 7%, but a 4% shared expense item rather than this 10 or 7% that we're talking about over the course of the next couple of years. Why, why have we changed these two things in the plan that we're proposing? Let me offer three reasons. First, the original plan was based upon a growth pattern for the cooperative program that has proven to be unrealistic. Uh, the math, the formula to get more funds to the nations required significant growth in the amount of funds coming from our churches. That, that, that growth just hasn't taken place and was an unrealistic projection given the recession that, uh, that we're uh, currently uh, dealing with, the results of that recession. And so instead of just scrapping the plan, we wanted to find a new plan to help us move forward. Secondly, the original plan designated 4% for shared expenses based upon just sort of an arbitrary number. No study was undertaken to see how much we have been spending or we ought to be spending on cooperative program promotion and resourcing. Well, we've now done the study. We're able to say with confidence that we're spending at least 10% on cooperative program promotion and resourcing, but we are committed to getting that down to 7% and holding the line at 7%. The third reason, the original plan left your Kentucky Baptist Convention Mission Board having to make unpredictable budget adjustments over the course of an entire decade depending on how much CP money was given each year. So we're, we would constantly have to be uh, uh, doing new math and coming up with new breakdowns and new ways to move forward, new cuts. It was just too difficult and too complicated for us to budget effectively and communicate effectively. Our new simplified budget plan that we're proposing is, well, it's simpler. And that isn't uh, being critical of the Great Commission Task Force recommendations. In fact, we believe this new approach embraces the spirit of those recommendations. And so does the Great Commission Task Force. I met with them recently and received a unanimous endorsement for the plan that is being proposed. In fact, the Great Commission Task Force uh, has said they want to advocate for this plan. The plan acknowledges some realities that could not have been known by the task force when they undertook their work three years ago. But now we have a clear picture of where CP is and where we think it's going. We're making adjustments. Before I move on from this topic, Let's recall for a moment why this discussion ensued three years ago. At the time, I was chairman of the International Mission Board and had a front row seat to one of the most disturbing eras in Southern Baptist missions. It was the beginning of the drawdown. Southern Baptist stood before more open doors of opportunity for gospel advance than at any time in our history. Yet, unwilling to make the financial sacrifices necessary to even maintain the status quo, we were forced to begin to reduce the overseas missionary force. At that time, our missionary count hovered around 5,700. Today, it's well under 5,000. That's the reduction that we've undertaken as our Southern Baptist International Mission Board has cut back its staff. In Kentucky, we know lostness abounds among our population of 4.3 million. The 2,400 KBC churches are attacking that lostness every day with the gospel. Yet among the 90 million people of, say, Bihar, India, you can count our missionaries on one hand. 90 million. 99.8% of them lost. That's the reason Kentucky Baptists have chosen to make the sacrifice of sending more of our mission dollars 
to the ends of the earth. Those sacrifices will continue to be very real for our mission board staff and our KBC agencies and institutions, but those sacrifices are not going to put us out of business in Kentucky. Hear my heart on this. The need of the gospel in Kentucky is growing, not shrinking. For example, a study just released revealed that Elliott County, Kentucky, is only 2% evangelical. That's a very symbolic number. Why is that number so symbolic? Well, 2% is a marking point in the research of evangelization of the world. If a people group is less than 2% evangelical, it is declared to be unreached with the gospel. Elliott County hovers at 2%. If something doesn't change, one of our own counties in Kentucky could well be classified as unreached with the gospel. When a people group drops below 2% is unreached, we don't send missions dollars outside of Kentucky because Kentucky doesn't need them, nor because a soul in Africa is worth more than a soul in Kentucky. We're still focusing on the missions in Kentucky, but recognizing that the Acts 1-8 charge and Great Commission mandate require us to invest sacrificially and proportionally in gospel work at home and abroad. We believe getting as quickly as possible to that 50-50 split is the right thing to do. And at the same time, our plan acknowledges the SBC directive that the state convention should be spending funds on behalf of the SBC to promote the work, the cooperative program resourcing uh, of our budget is what that's all about. In Revelation 20, John records this vision. I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no one was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, God's word is true. To say that our work from Kentucky to the ends of the earth is anything short of life and death is to disbelieve the word of God and it's to misunderstand the commission that we have been given. Might God use us in his sovereign plan to continue to take the gospel to Kentucky, to North America, and to the ends of the earth.